52 million dollar BTC, USDT, DOT and NFTs donated to Ukraine. Everyone was anticipating when the mainstream adoption of cryptocurrencies would take place. The conflicts between Ukraine and Russia might just have quickened that process. This is because Ukraine, as a nation, has been accepting crypto donations from everyone across the world. But what does this mean for cryptocurrencies? How does it affect Ukraine's situation? And above all, does this mean crypto is now a legal tender in Ukraine too? So, welcome back to the channel, where as usual we demystify crypto and present it to you in a simple format. Today we will take a look at how Ukraine managed to amass over 52 million dollars of donations in cryptos alone, and what it means for the world of cryptocurrencies. To understand the economics of crowdfunding a war, we must start from the beginning. Ukraine is not the wealthiest of countries in Europe, but has a very rich cultural heritage, and its Kiev is older than Russia itself. While the invading forces, Russians, have invested in their defense sector for a long time, arming them to the teeth, in this situation it is hard for a smaller country like Ukraine to defend itself with its limited resources and armed forces. But crowdfunding a war isn't anything new to this underdog. Back in 2014, after Russia seized the Crimean region of Ukraine, they used private donors to pay for military equipment. But this time it's different, as the popularity of cryptocurrency has made it a key variable in this war, both sides. For Ukrainians, it can be a much needed tool to gather donations, but for Russia, cryptocurrencies are the perfect means to evade the sanction placed on it. The Ukrainian government embraced crypto as can be seen in a tweet from the country's official Twitter handle that says, Stand with the people of Ukraine, now accepting cryptocurrency donations, Bitcoin, Ethereum and USDT, along with links to their Bitcoin and Ethereum wallets. A note for our viewers, as there are many charlatans and scammers out there right now, spreading around their wallet addresses along with the same message to make a quick profit. So if you are interested in making any donations, please double check the wallet address with the original tweet to make sure your donations are helping the good cause. Now coming back to how Ukraine managed to amass over 52 million dollars in cryptocurrencies. Accepting crypto donations was new to the Ukrainian government, so they partnered up with several Ukraine based crypto institutions. Among them is Kuna.io, a cryptocurrency exchange based in Kyiv that set up and managed cryptocurrency wallets for the Ukrainian government. Kuna also helped Ukraine's government to convert these donations into traditional currency, mostly euros. Kuna.io's chief executive, Michael Kobanian, said, We obviously can't buy nuclear bombs or rockets with cryptocurrencies, but most non-lethal things you can buy with crypto. According to sources, most of this money was spent on acquiring critical supplies like drones, bulletproof vests, gasoline, thermal optics both from state-funded agencies and the private sector. Cobain also revealed that the Ukrainian government plans to convert less popular cryptos into fiat, while holding on to more stable and liquid reserves of Bitcoin and Ethereum for future needs. Another Ethereum-based group called DAO Ukraine came to the limelight, as they managed to auction off the 10th most expensive NFT, the Ukrainian flag NFT. It was sold for a whopping 6.5 million US dollars, and all of these proceeds will be used to fund the defensive efforts of Ukraine. The DAO even announced that it will drop love tokens to the wallets that contributed to the sales. In addition, they also stated that the token will hold no utility nor value, but are a beautiful testament and reminder of your contribution to a noble cause. Talking of NFTs, more than 180 donations were made using digital artworks and other non-fungible tokens, even though the government didn't specifically ask for NFT donations. Someone even donated a Shibalon NFT. A collection based on an alternative reality where Elon Musk was granted power by an alien, who also created Bitcoin. According to the chief executive of Kuna.io, Ukraine has not needed to sell any of the NFTs because of massive currency donations, but he assured that if needed, the government would sell the NFTs as he said, it doesn't matter, we can sell anything now. In another gesture of goodwill, on 1st March, the developers behind Solana and Everstake partnered up with Mikhailo Fedorov's digital ministry to form a joint effort called Aid for Ukraine. In a tweet, Mikhailo Fedorov stated massive support from crypto projects Solana and Everstake, which set up a joint initiative, Aid for Ukraine, in collaboration with our to raise funds for Ukraine. As of making this video, Aid for Ukraine has raised more than one and a half million dollars. Over the weeks, more than 72,000 individual donations have been made to the wallets tweeted from Ukraine official handle consisting of more than $20 billion just in Ethereum. Bitcoin donations add up to a little over $17.2 million and nearly $10 million in Tether and other stable coins. 
Whereas, according to Elliptic, a company that provides blockchain analytics for crypto asset compliance, more than 96,000 donations have been made to all the donation wallets. These include popular cryptos like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, Polkadot, Dogecoin and Solana, just to name a few. Elliptic estimates these donations to have a combined value of more than $46.7 million. But what does all this mean for the bigger global crypto market? Are these driving the price of cryptocurrencies even higher? Or will this lead to a crash? Even in this regard, Elliptic's chief scientist, Tom Robinson, pointed out the most prominent benefit of using crypto when he said, Cryptocurrency is particularly suited to international fundraising because it doesn't respect national boundaries and it's censorship resistant. There is no central authority that can block transactions, for example, in response to sanctions. This makes cryptocurrencies a double-edged sword, as its semi-anonymous natures make it fit for use by both sides. But Russia also has a severe advantage in terms of cryptos, as the sheer number of crypto miners in Russia is very huge, meaning they have access to tons of crypto and virtual assets, locally, but their country. But converting them into a stable fiat will be a challenging task, as Russia's economy crumples under the weight of Western sanctions. The collapse of the Russian economy has also forced its citizens to convert their life savings into more stable digital assets like Tether and Bitcoin, which is also backed by trade volume records. According to Crypto Compare, trade volumes between Russia rubles and major cryptos has hit 15.3 billion rubles, nearly triple of previous week's market performance. With more people in the crypto spaces, more and more digital assets are trading hands and it is ultimately good for the future of blockchain and Web 3.0 as a whole. In fact, this sudden push towards converting savings to digital assets is realizing Bitcoin's nickname as digital gold. And with Russian banks cut off from the SWIFT network that is used to make international transactions, cryptocurrencies are the only effective means for making cross-border transactions. So more and more Russian companies are also looking into cryptocurrency as a real alternative to making international transactions. For crypto enthusiasts, this has again proven the real-world importance for a decentralized global currency, which is unencumbered by weighty bureaucracies. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia and the crippling Russian economy might be the final step towards mainstream adoption of cryptocurrencies. Both sides are being funded under the veil of blockchains, and crypto is simultaneously a force for good and force for evil. But even when global tensions are at an all-time high in the middle of the first war in Europe after World War II, crypto is standing strong and holding its value. Let us know in the comments below, what do you think? Should Russia be banned from major exchanges to stop them from converting to fiat? Is crowdfunding a war under the anonymity of blockchain a good idea? And will this soon lead to a time where countries at war would be able to buy lethal weapons using cryptocurrencies? If you found the video interesting, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you are new here, subscribe and click the bell icon. This way you will be notified of all the future videos from us, including upcoming crypto news. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.